Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the top 5 MCQ tips for CPA Canada exams. And then I'll also add in some secrets on MCQ statistics. If you like what you see, please consider to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. So the most effective way to ace your multiple choice exams is to practice. To do this, I would go through your weekly quizzes. In addition, in D2L, under the content tab, you would have a retired case which also has 75 multiple choice and their solutions. Going through your multiple choice quizzes one week at a time might not be that beneficial because you might have remembered the answers, so that's why I always recommend people to print them all out and then mix up the order from the various weeks so that it's not always you're doing week one and then week two and then week three. You might get some questions from week six, you might get some from week one and then eight and then two and so on and so forth. And then in between all of those, you could always mix in the 75 multiple choice that are from the retired case. So what I found with D2L was that sometimes it's kind of finicky and it doesn't let you print everything. So what you can do is click on the text and then press Ctrl plus A to select everything and then Ctrl plus P to print everything. My next tip is to mark questions that you want to review at the end of your exam. You will be provided physical copies of your exam so you can mark them up. So what I would normally do is that I would either draw random symbols beside it to either indicate it was a pure guess or I was really having trouble deciding between two options. Make sure you always do leave some time at the end to review all of your answers and this method can help you identify which ones you want to spend more time on. The next tip is to know what to study for. For example, if you're taking Core 1, most likely you want to spend all your time in financial reporting and audit and assurance. If you're in Core 2, then you should spend your time in managerial accounting topics. If you're in assurance, most likely you want to spend time in financial reporting and audit and assurance. If you're doing performance management, you spend your time in strategy and governance and managerial accounting. If you're doing finance or tax, you'd probably only focus on the topic of your elective. My next tip is that if you've taken over a minute to read the question and all the options and you're not sure how to answer the question, maybe your best choice is to just skip it for now and go to an easier question that you do know how to answer. This will help you build your confidence as you get to answer easier questions. And based on psychology books, what happens is that your brain tries to solve the previous questions in the background while you're answering other questions. However, having said that it's okay to skip questions, I'm not saying it's okay to leave questions blank because you should always come back to them and put in some sort of answer even if it's a guess because there's no marks taken off for the wrong answer. Also when you skip questions, maybe you'll go to one that will give you some clues on how to solve the previous ones. My last tip is to read the questions and answers carefully. Why I say that is because there's always these keywords that if you miss it, you'll lose the meaning of what the whole question was trying to ask. For example, if they say not, or always, or all, or best. In addition, you also want to try to eliminate the obviously wrong answers, so you narrow down what is the right answer, and at the end of the day, when you do multiple choice exams, sometimes it just comes down to probability, so the less options you have to choose from, the higher your odds you are getting the right answer. Now for the secret statistical techniques. In a book called Rock Break Scissors, they went through hundreds of multiple choice tests and they found these following insights. If you have four options to choose from, normally B is the best option at 28%. When you have true or false questions, true is normally right. When you have the option to choose none of the above or all of the above, normally those are right. And the answer that was right on the previous question, for example, let's say D, is the least likely to be right in the present question. So that means normally you're not going to get two Ds in a row or two As in a row. Again, these are just statistical insights on multiple choice exams, and the best technique is always just to study. Thanks again for watching my video. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up. If you have time, please feel free to check out one of my other videos to help you along with your CPA journey. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below.